Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and this is my reply to the CRTC's Memorandum of Fact and Law in the case where the moderator of the debate had me removed by police for exposing my party badge after I had taken it off and obeyed his command. The CRTC found that they had a right to exclude me from the debate, and this is my reply. Federal Court of Appeal between John C. Termal, applicant, and Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, the respondent. Applicant reply to CRTC Memorandum of Fact and Law. Overview. The issues in this appeal are, 1. Whether the licensee controls display of candidates' promotional materials. 2. Whether a candidate can be punished by the loss of time after the moderator's command has been obeyed. 3. Whether the Commission is derelict in its duty to regulate and supervise airtime distribution beforehand. 4. Whether the Ontario Court of Appeal decision in R versus CBC that debates are not programs of partisan political character is contradictory. 5. Whether omitting the all for the Commission's policy statements from the statutes all rival parties and candidates is derelict. 6. Whether the Ontario Court of Appeals contradictory ruling should be accepted as final or 7. Whether accepting the court ruling which corrupts the democratic process by allowing the exclusion of candidates from debates when they can issue new regulations that work is a dereliction of the duty to regulate and supervise that election debates be democratic. Part 1 Facts The Commission stated CRTC, paragraph 2, the applicant was a candidate in the 2007 Ontario provincial election. On 18 September 2007, he participated in a debate program hosted by Rogers on its community channel, Rogers TV, for six candidates in the riding of Brandt. At some point during or shortly after the applicant made his opening statement, he was removed from the set and did not participate further in the debate, unquote. Two, this is our answer. There is no quote or shortly after, unquote. Both applicant and respondent have and could produce the videotape of the event, showing it was during the opening statement and after applicant had obeyed the moderator's command to remove the party affiliation badge that moderator Tim Philp then ordered Brantford police to remove the applicant. So I took it off, put it down before he had me taken away anyway. The respondent has offered no evidence to support the suggestion that the candidate was ordered removed after his opening statement. So to be clear, the timeline is abolitionist candidate dons Let's Local Employment Trading System badge. Moderator Tim Philp interrupts to command the badge be removed. Three, candidate obeys controller of the microphone to remove the badge. Four, moderator orders police to remove candidate anyway. 3. CRTC said, on September 24th, the applicant filed a complaint with the Commission, alleging that his removal from the debate amounted to denying him an equitable share of a free-time partisan political broadcast, as he asserted was required by the Commission's regulations, and requesting that the Commission take action. For my answer, Rogers responded, oh, there's continue, Rogers responded to the applicant's complaint and explained its reasons for why the applicant was removed from the debate program. Rogers alleged that the applicant had taken issue with the request to remove a badge he was wearing in violation of rules set by Rogers for the debate regarding the display of candidates' promotional material on the production set. Four, my answer. The Commission does crystallize issue number one herein as whether debate organizers on our public airwaves may control the display of candidates' promotional materials. Applicant has detailed how all my promotional materials were used in previous elections to help me explain my programs and that it was in order to impair only my presentation that moderator Tim Philp banned all candidates' promotional materials since the Commission has given him the power to make up any rules he wishes candidates obey in order to receive their fair share of the airtime pie. 5. CRTC. Subsequently, according to Rogers, the applicant interrupted a fellow candidate, at which point the moderator had the applicant removed from the set. My answer 6. This doesn't fit into the timeline. 
applicant illegally donning his party affiliation badge, moderator demanding it be removed, applicant obeying the omnipotent controller of the microphone and removing the illegal party identification, and four, debate furor ordering police to remove candidate anyway. An interruption of another candidate just does not fit in. It only fits if the moderator must have ruled that I had to be punished for my transgression against his etched-in-stone rules by losing the rest of my opening statement, thus making my continuation of my opening statement an interruption of the next candidate in his opinion. Of course, Fuhrer Philp does not say he is punishing me by denying me the remainder of my opening statement. Applicant will argue that moderator does not have the authority to deny candidates equitable time in punishment for violation of the rules dictated by them media organizers. Issue number two. So, CRTC, paragraph five, on October 1st, applicant wrote again to the commission requesting it compel Rogers to give the applicant an equitable share of time before election day. I answer the CRTC has both a regulatory responsibility to enact and supervisory responsibility to ensure a democratic election influence by the greatest influence of all, electronic media. Having no process to prevent a undemocratic distributions shows the commission's failure to regulate and supervise that the time pie be shared fairly. If one can figure out the distribution of a cherry pie is unfair before the pie is eaten, the commission is derelict in being unable to judge that the distribution of a time pie is equitable, inequitable, before it is allocated on an inequitable basis to not all rival candidates. Issue 3. CRTC. On April 8th, Commission issued broadcasting, oh, 2009, the Commission issued broadcasting decision 184, dismissing the applicant's complaint. Broadcasting decision CRTC 2009-184 at this website. And in a decision, the commission noted that it considered the applicant's request that the commission compel Rogers to provide him with an equitable share of the time in the election debate program was now moot, given that the election had already taken place. And I answer, this is only because of the commission's failure to regulate and supervise that the media's allocation of the time pie before the event be equitable. CRTC, paragraph 10. The Commission noted that in Public Notice 1995-44, it stated that, pursuant to the Ontario Court of Appeals decision in R versus CBC 1993, the Commission's regulations regarding the equitable allocation of time did not apply to election debate programs because they are not programs of a partisan political character. So I answer, the Ontario Court of Appeal has ruled that debates do not have to be shared equitably like other broadcasts of partisan political character because debates are not programs of partisan political character. This contradiction, rationalizing the exclusion of some candidates from Canada's democratic process, is certainly being challenged herein. Issue number four. CRTC. The Commission further noted that it had, it had reiterated this statement in Broadcasting Circular 2007 number 5, issued in connection with the 2007 Ontario provincial election. And I say, in fulfilling their responsibility to ensure a democratic use of the national airwaves, the respondent has made sure to alert the media that the Ontario Court of Appeal has okayed excluding any candidate they want without reason if they merely call it a debate. 15. CRTC. And by the way, you're not allowed to debate with the other candidates in these so-called debates. 11. You're not allowed to talk to the other candidates in these so-called debates. The Commission considered that in light of its determinations in Public Notice 1995-44, it was within Rogers' editorial discretion to exclude participants from an election debate program. I'll read that again. The Commission considered that in light of the notice, it was within the TV network's editorial discretion to exclude anybody they want from an election debate program. Democracy in Canada. Yes, Rogers did call it a debate. And the Commission considers it within Rogers' editorial discretion to exclude any candidate they want from a democratic debate program. 
So not only is the issue raised of whether the licensee has absolute control, not only over candidates' promotional materials, but over candidates' participation too. CRTC, who were not complying with the rules and format Rogers had set for the program. So it's possible to exclude candidates and to exclude candidates who haven't obeyed the rules. And I said, of course, if Rogers may exclude any candidate at their total editorial discretion because they call it a debate, it's a bonus to hide such absolute control over participation if they can also make up rules offensive enough to prompt some candidates to rebel, especially those whom the changes in format are intended to disfavor. Of course, since the commission is omitted to mention that the applicant had obeyed the Fuhrer's order, before being ejected, the Commission must therefore fail to see that the issue herein is not breaking Big Brother's rules. It's about being punished after obeying, and about how much a candidate can be punished by loss of airtime after he has already obeyed. 